Hi everybody, it's Chris Petrie. I'm glad you could be here. We're actually going to have some fun. We're going to do something a little different today. Um, we're going to do a watercolor, a stormy sky in watercolor. And the reason I, I wanted to actually do this, it's a really exciting uh, feeling of using lots of color, lots of vibrant color. Um, also, some really good uh, wet technique, you know, with some wet and wet. Um, adding lots of paint, using all of our colors in our palette. Sort of like it's, this is more of a composition just to really um, get into the colors and the vibrancy of colors uh, with watercolor. And um, let's get right into it. The, this is real, this is a very simple um, composition. We're just going to basically, um, I have some uh, satin finished watercolor paper and I'm just going to draw out a um, somewhat of the size we're going to do here. Let's do so maybe so we'll this is maybe like maybe an 8 by 8 or 7 by 7 size and we'll get some artist tape, good artist tape and we'll tape around our our frame our borders, we'll get, we're going to put a nice uh, tape around our, our painting, our composition here. Again, this is for fun. You know, I am I do a lot of fun style watercolor uh, compositions. Um, over my years of painting, I've always tried to just have a lot of time of just experimenting, having um, fun with the medium, trying different things. Um, it, it's a, always a good learning experience, so let's tr let's try that here. Um, no stress here, just a uh, simple, some nice um, drafting tape or uh, masking tape on our satin finished watercolor paper. You can use any kind of watercolor paper. You can use printer paper, really, you can use anything. But I'm using some uh, Arches uh, satin finished watercolor paper here. And um, what I'd like to do also is we're going to make it like, a, let's say, an ocean, an ocean scene. Um, stormy, stormy skies with with an ocean kind of feel. So it'll be like out on the ocean. And um, the thing with our scene, we're going to try to figure out: Do we want more sky or more ocean in in the um, in our in our composition here? And I'm going to say let's use more sky and less ocean. So let's make our if we're looking at our we're looking at our rectangle here or our square this is more of a square than it is a rectangle and we have let's say we break it into th let's say we break it into like thirds so let's go with um, if we had thirds one two and three so if we have thirds here let's make the um, ocean here ocean and then we'll make this sky the rest of the way, like that. So one third ocean, two thirds sky. And also, let's have a little bit of interesting fun. Let's let's create a. We'll do a horizon line with our tape, like this, and we'll do the sky first, and then we'll. We'll work down into the ocean next, but let's start with the sky first. So let's tape off our horizon line with our ocean, like that. So we press nice and firmly on the tape where the water is going to be coming down the page and you know uh, coming up against this tape line here. And this line, you know, we don't have to worry about pressing the tape down too much on this side of the tape. Just this side here where the watercolors paint and water is going to be coming this way. So we do that this way, here, like that, nice and firmly. It's good to press the tape firmly around when we're taping off things. And now we're going to really have some fun. Now, again, we're doing a stormy sky, and it's going to be uh, an ocean scene. And we're going to try to use lots of color and make it really like vibrant and real exciting. Not that we paint this way every day, but this will actually be a freeing experience for those of us 
I don't really tend to paint with a lot of darks all the time, but I do love that look. So it's just a matter of your style. So does that make sense? If your style is you really don't use a lot of darks in your paintings and you paint more like high key paintings, and that's what I paint mostly, but once in a while, if you can change things around and just kind of experiment a little, it'll be it's a lot of fun. So um, let's do it. Okay, so here we're gonna put some water on the paper, clean fresh water. I'm gonna put some water on the paper, just maybe up here on the this side of the paper, and then kind of. That's all, just a little bit. And let's really have some fun sky. It's going to be a stormy sky, so let's go with French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. Let's use lots of color. We're going to use all our colors here. Um, burnt sienna. We're going to get in some uh, raw umber. We're going to use some lizard and crimson. We're going to use some peacock blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue. Let's get lots of paint out on our palette. We're going with all the blues. Let's go with some black. We'll keep that down here. It's closer here, so we'll use our full palette. We'll try to, you know, utilize our whole palette if we can. So we have some uh, Payne's gray and some ivory black, which I'm just mixing up here like that. And let's just go in and... Wow! Look at that! Is that cool or what? And then let's make it darker up here in this corner. I'm going to go straight into my tube paint right there, freshly squeezed paint. And I'll make it totally dark up here in this corner. And um, and then we'll lighten it up as we, we go this way. Now here the key is we want to kind of keep moving here. We don't want to stop so much. And then let's get in some of our other warmer colors. Let's use everything. Again, we'll go back in. Burnt Sienna. Burnt Umber. Some Lizard and Crimson. Let's get lots of color in here. And it doesn't have to be exactly like real life you can you can pretend a little bit maybe it's a little darker and a little more interesting with the colors and maybe some gold in there too and like that okay lots of water too over here so let's lighten it up over here so over here on the right side we're going to keep it lighter some cerulean blue we're going to keep it lighter over here on this side in the darker areas over here and then let's make it even more interesting let's go with some sunset colors a lizard and crimson cadmium red orange yellow let's go with a little bit of a sunset feel here like that so it's a sort stormy sky as well as it's a little bit of a sunset feel so let's just we'll scrub in those colors and that's all. There we go. And we'll go in, we'll get some more darks. Use lots of color. And maybe just some cadmium red along here for the sunset feel. A little bit of cadmium orange. Wow, look at that. And we'll add some more freshly squeezed uh, paint. And I'll also add some of that sunset color up here too, just to mix it around a little. Okay. Now, this is the uh, fun part. We're going to remove the tape in just a second. Let's take a piece of paper towel or tissue works too and just go along this tape edge and try to get up any excess water. If you have any excess water building up a little bit, you just run a, some paper towel or tissue along here and pick some of that up so that when we lift our tape off, it, it, it's not going to run down so much. 
So let's sort of do that. Okay, that's looking good. And then we're going to peel our gently peel, peel our tape off. Notice how I have my tape. I'm angling it like this. This is a good way to peel tape off versus just taking it and whoosh, take your time when you peel off your tape. Kind of angle it on a, like a 45 degree angle, like this on a 45 degree angle, and then just slowly come across. And it'll be less likely to tear the paper, the watercolor paper, if you do it this way. And perfect. Look at that. Now, let's do some more colors. Let's get some green. I didn't do green. Let's do green. Since I added some green, or I'm going to add some green for my ocean color, let me just add a little bit of green in the sky. Be careful when you add it up here not to go too much water. You could also do this later. You could add some green later once this dries up top here. That might be the better way to go. Sometimes it'll make um, it'll it'll disturb the paper if we add um, water while this is still drying. So it might be better to let it, let it dry. So get your first washes on and, and let it sit. Then later on when it dries, you can add some green. But I I'm being impatient here and trying to get it done quickly. And then here I'm going to use some green as well as all these colors. So we're just going to mirror the colors that we're using. So the orange, gold, reds, we're going to try to, and I'm trying to keep a careful line here. Maybe certain areas we touch the sky, other areas we let it just sit without getting, so we leave that little bit of that white paper. That looks interesting. that. Perfect. And that's all you have to do. And then all we're going to do is the reverse. It's going to get darker over here because we're going to mirror the sky into the water. So the sky is orange and red along the horizon line where the edge of the ocean is. And then we just mirror that same color right underneath it. And then as we go down the page more, we start putting in more darks. So let's do that. We'll, again, we'll do our French ultramarine. Mix up all these colors and we'll start just getting in these darker, beautiful dark colors. The blues and the greens. And browns and reds, and burnt siennas. Lots of color. And mix it around. Have fun with this. A little bit of splashing. Get a little bit of variety in here. And then here it's a little lighter over here. On this side of the painting, again, we're kind of just mirroring down into the water what's above. Cerulean blue. Here. I'll use some mineral violet too. And if I use mineral violet down here, I'm definitely going to put it back up here too. And make sure we use the same colors all around the painting. That's looking fantastic. Let's keep going here. Now, again, we can make this even more exciting. Let's. I'm going to dry this off a little bit. And I just use the blow dryer just a touch to dry off just a little bit. And let's put in some red here. Maybe some orange. A little 
lizard and crimson, a little bit of lizard and crimson here. And some cadmium yellow. And again, if we're using these colors, try to, again, I would do this when it dries with the yellow, cadmium yellow, but pretty much And that's all. And then I dry off my brush a little bit with the paper towel so that I don't, I don't have too much water on my brush now at this point and I'll try to just smooth this out a little bit. Now that that's exciting. That, that's a really cool, exciting effect. Again, we're just mixing colors, having fun, using lots of beautiful dark rich colors and vibrant colors and reds and oranges and blues and greens. All of our spectrum of colors, we're using them. We'll peel off the tape here and just to see how great it's going to look. And, and this is really just a practice composition of getting lots of color out onto the paper, uh, mixing colors, using lots of colors, you know, not, not uh, limiting ourselves just to two or three. Let's, let's use everything and see how it looks, and it looks great. And I carefully again peel my tape with that 45 degree angle so it doesn't tear the paper. And we'll do the same thing here, 45 degree angle. Wow, that looks great. Incredible color, right? Vibrant color, tremendous amounts of color. We used every color pretty much in our palette for this. And uh, so I hope you have fun with this. Try it out. Please try this composition. Um, and then maybe in some of your paintings, if you don't paint as dark as this and as, um, you know, let's say lower key or middle key type paintings have more of these type uh, color mixtures in them and the uh, tonal value, that darker tonal value, but you could use this idea in a smaller section of, of any type of painting, no matter what key it's in, if it's high or lower middle key. Um, and uh, maybe we'll do a video on uh, different key paintings and how people key their paintings. Everyone's, you know, a little different how they like their styles or how they like to paint. But I hope you had this, uh, I hope you have fun with this composition and try it out. I know it's going to be um, a learning experience. You'll have fun. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.